get started here. I'm assuming everyone can see this. Uh, today we're going to talk about new treatments for ingrown and ugly toenails. And you, you might think it's kind of funny why I talked about ugly toenails. But the, the main reason actually is because an, an, an injured toenail or an ugly toenail, it could be caused by fungus or it could be caused by a lot of other things. And it's not always a fungus, but a lot of people have a problem with their toenails and maybe they don't want uh, any treatment for the fungus, but they want some type of treatment for the appearance. And there are some new things that can help with the appearance. Specifically, if you look at this picture up on top, this is one of the newer treatments for ingrown toenails. And it's really been revolutionary I've been doing this about 12 years now, and there's nothing like this that's come out that's really changed our profession like this. This is called the Onifix, and this is really a, a painless and a non-injection way of uh, correcting an ingrown toenail over time. So that's been really great. We're going to talk about that today. And then the other two pictures, it's more of a cosmetic uh, thing that both men and women come in for because of the summer. Like right now, when you look down at your toes, a lot of people are embarrassed when they look at the toes, and, and, they're, and they're concerned uh, uh, about them. And there are some new cosmetic procedures to, to treat those. And we're going to go over that as well today. Uh, basically, we're going to look at what are the causes of ingrown toenails. We're going to look at what to do with recurrent ingrown toenail treatments, what causes ugly toenails, and then which could be fungal or non-fungal uh, due to injury, and then some treatment options. We're going to look at something called Cariflex specifically. It's a new technology. Both of these technologies, it's funny, both the Onifex and the Cariflex, they both come from Germany. And they, I, I think they're more advanced. The reason I think they have more of these other products is because they don't have as many podiatrists. And because of that, we're, we're so used to doing surgical procedures for these. They don't have someone that really does those and they have to be creative and kind of think outside the box. And then we're gonna go over some questions. And, and so um, just some housekeeping rules. We're gonna record this uh, for future use with patients. Uh, keep your microphone muted. Um, if you do want to say something, we're going to be time for questions. If you have a specific question, you can write it in the chat box, and we're going to go uh, over it in the, in the different sections. And uh, I just want to emphasize, this doesn't replace medical care. Many of you already are patients of myself, of uh, Dr. Feldman, of Dr. Saviot, and, um, and we also have a new doctor here, Dr. Kellner. And um, this doesn't replace medical care. It's more for educational purposes. So let's get into this. What's the real problem right now? The problem is most of our patients, if you look at this picture on the upper left-hand corner, they come in with ingrown toenails and they may be referred from primary cares. They might come in on their own. They might be recurrent. And, and the traditional treatment is to cut down the side and take out a piece of the nail. And that's very effective. But there's a lot of other people that don't have an infection, like this picture in the center, but what they have is they have callus buildup and they have a lot of pressure. What they complain of is pressure in their nails that's not really um, that urgent. There's no infection and there's no reason to take out the nail uh, because it's, it, it's quite painful, but they're just constantly kind of in pain. And if they don't, for example, get a pedicure or come to see a podiatrist every two or three months, it starts to really hurt them, not get infected. And that a lot of times can be from this callus buildup. I kind of equate this callus buildup to the leaves that build up in your gutter. So as the nail grows, it builds up this callus, and over time that callus gets hard and it gets painful and bothersome to people. And we're gonna talk about some newer options and how the traditional options are to treat that. And then we're gonna look at some ugly nails. And, and I, I know I just, I use the word ugly, I think, but it's a non-technical term. So my, this might be an onychomycotic nail with something with fungus. This is a nail that's had previous trauma with, with a nail procedure. Basically, this patient had both sides of the nail taken out, traditionally what we've done, and now they're stuck with a nail like this. And for a lot of uh, young people or, and older people, it can be very you know, disturbing or, or, or they don't want to wear sandals. I had a patient come in the other day and, and she said, you know, Dr. Belto, I, I said, I fixed her nail and I did this new procedure and she started to cry. And I said, well, why? And I, and I asked her, did you, for example, wear a Band-Aid on your toenail whenever you wore sandals? And then she just broke down. Because we don't realize, it might not be a medical painful condition, but people are very ashamed and they're putting Band-Aids on their toenails because they're ashamed of them because they can't find treatment or they don't know what treatment exists. And she just cried. And she said, you know, in nine years, 
I haven't worn sandals because of my toenail. And now at least for these three months, there, there's an option. So that, that's why we're sharing this because it's really been changing uh, for a lot of patients. And you see these two pictures in the bottom, these are more of a, a lifting or a, what we call a lytic nail. And this can sometimes be fungus and sometimes it's non-fungus. It can just be that the nail lifts and keeps getting loosened and loosened and lifting up more and more. And then it could get a fungal infection inside as well. Um, let's start with the focus on ingrown toenails. I know it seems very simple, but I'm gonna start just kind of explaining the normal anatomy versus an ingrown toenail. The normal anatomy is here on the left picture. It grows straight and it should be relatively level. What happens over time is either one or both sides of those nails tend to grow in, and once they grow in, they tend to recur. Not for everyone. Some people have, they have one ingrown toenail and then it doesn't come back. But as the toenail actually curves, it tends to be more problematic. The ones that we see that are kind of one and done would be, for example, someone that, a, a, a child that has a really tight shoe, or tight socks, or they trimmed it the wrong way. Um, so looking at the causes, it could be a, a tight shoe. Uh, a, many shoes now are tapered, and that tapering of the shoe uh, can cause the nails to, to push together. So one treatment is what we call anatomic shoe. So an anatomic shoe is a shoe that's wider in the front. And there are a couple of brands, and I'll, I'll, I'll share them at the end of the presentation if you want to consider those, uh, Ultra, Topo, uh, lens or some brands that are more anatomic. Another problem can be a thickened toenail. If you have a thickened toenail or a fungal toenail, it takes up more space. And if it takes up more space, it, it's more prone to get ingrown. Inherited. I, I see many people, I see the, the, you know, the father comes in, he said, you know, as we're doing the ingrown toenail on the daughter or the son, they say, you know, you know, I had this problem. My kids have the problem. Uh, you know, I joke with my wife. I think my kids have her toenails not my toenails because I don't have any problems, but you know, some people have the toenails that go up a little bit. So things get inherited. And if you look at your toenails, they might look like your kids' toenails and, and they're probably gonna be a problem, even from the width. Uh, also trauma, sometimes if you drop something on your toe, you never had a problem with an ingrown toenail, but you drop it and then it gets infected. The wide nail was more of the, ana the anatomy, it, very similar to wisdom teeth. You don't have enough room for those, for those, you know, those wisdom teeth there and you have to take it out. For some patients, you know, the, the Onifix or that application process isn't going to be effective because your, your nail is just too wide. And then nail tracking, that's what I talked about, kind of like the groove. It, it just kind of follows the groove. So what happens is that as your nail gets used to going in, it just continues to go in and even more and more and it pinches things down. We're going to kind of talk about that. And someone asked me a great question. <clears throat> this is a question I get a lot. And I wanted to start with this. How should you cut your toenails? Everyone asks me, and I know it seems like a very simple answer, but I wanted to take some time to address it. The proper way to trim a toenail is straight across. But you might say, but how come you, Dr. Pelto, dig into the edge? And uh, the reason I do that is I'm seeing you every three months, and I have to get this nail out because I know it's going to be bothersome for you, or there's callus or other things like that. But normally, if you cut the edge out, and if you're consistently cutting the edge out, you might miss a piece you might miss a piece in there. Also, if you cut it too short and, and something like that, see how that, it's, it's cut very, very short on the, on the left-hand side. If it's cut too short, what happens is then it can start to lift. So you get water in there and then you start to clean it out. That's a big problem. People get a lifting toenail and then they use something to clean either their finger or something and they clean it out and they think they have to get all that gunk out. Well, that lifts it more. It's kind of like the linoleum at your house. If you have one edge of the linoleum that's lifted, and it gets gunk underneath there, and you try to clean it out, it'll lift more and lift more. That's what happens with the nail. So that nail detachment can be a big problem. And a lot of times trimming it all the way back uh, can help that to reattach. But reattachment of nails is a very challenging condition, and it's frustrating for patients. They think that they have that white discoloration, and they think that's a fungus, and then it isn't always. Sometimes it's just a lifted toenail. So that's just a, a primer on, on how to cut your, your toenails. Now, I just want to mention, all of these things we're talking about are people that don't have an infection. An infection is considered a medical emergency. You need to see either your doctor, you need to see your podiatrist, you need to see someone for the infection. 
what there's different treatment ways with ingrown toenails. Some places you go, they will just give you an antibiotic. Now the antibiotic will certainly cause the redness to come down, but many times when people trim out the edge of the nail, there's a little spicule, we call it, or a little piece of nail that needs to come out. You can't just take an antibiotic and not get rid of that kind of like the thorn, the thorn in your, in your toe. That thorn needs to come out. That piece needs to come out. Otherwise, the infection is going to come right back, that inflammation. And many times when you see a podiatrist or someone that knows how to do the procedure, there's a lot of primary care doctors that do these urgent cares. Um, what, if you know how to do it, you take it out and you don't even need to be on an antibiotic. Okay. So as I mentioned, we're going to talk about some, some toenail treatments for recurrent ingrown toenails. These are the people that always have ingrown toenails. What I mean by always is every month or every two months, their toenail grows in, it becomes painful, and they don't know what to do. And they, and they try all these things and they think it's their fault. I, I just want to start by saying it's, it's not your fault. It's, it's your toenail. Okay. It's not your fault, but there are some things you can try. Um, one of the treatments is where you pull, put the Put the band-aid around the edge that's ingrown like you can see in the bottom left here and you pull it down and that kind of pulls down the edge of the toenail that can kind of reduce some pressure on it some people if you see this picture on the right they put a little cotton underneath the nail okay oh dr pelto how come you never put cotton well i don't think cotton works long term okay these are just some things that you'll find if you search the internet we don't do these in the office but these are things that you may have tried um, once again, home treatment, trimming it out yourself, trimming the edge, and then uh, wider shoes, anatomic shoes or sandals. You may say in the summer, I never have a problem, but in the winter I do because of the closed-toed shoes. So the problem with, with ingrown toenails and treating it on your own is recurrence, pain, and once again, home treatment isn't recommended if it's inflamed or infected. You really need to see a specialist. And some of these other things we're going to talk about aren't recommended if it's inflamed or infected. <clears throat> Okay, let's go now to uh, the removal. This is what happens when you come to see a podiatrist or a specialist. What they do is they numb the toe up and you take out an edge of the nail. This is for that nail that's, that's infected, that's red, that's swollen. That's, you can see it on the side here. What you do is you take a little edge back and it leaves this little gap and it takes about six to nine months before it grows back. Sometimes it can recur, it can grow back. Okay, and that's where it becomes problematic for patients. And that's where sometimes you have to do the next procedure, which is to kill the root. The problem as well, uh, removing it is painful. There can be nail changes after the procedure. That's the problem. What happens is some people have like a line in the toenail. Some people have a no that no toenail that grows funky, it grows curved. Because you're, you're, you're dealing with the area at the base of the nail, which is called the matrix, that can be problematic. And then in the last option, this is what we do most commonly. For example, you can see this picture number one and two down here. Number one, it's a very wide nail. You can see that. There's just not enough room for the width of that nail. So this is a prime candidate to take out an edge of the nail and narrow it. You can see the, the narrowing of the nail and it looks better. It actually looks like a normal nail. So people with really wide nails, the Onifix isn't really a good option. Uh, for the matrixectomy, what we do is we do the same thing as this previous procedure right here. We take out a piece, we put a little Q-tip in there, and in our office we use sodium hydroxide, and that kills the cells. Now occasionally there can be a little pieces, that's called a, 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 a spicule, that can happen. Occasionally these can become infected. Normally they're not. Normally they're just really inflamed from all that acid that we put in there, the sodium hydroxide. It's going to make it all red at the base. They can come back occasionally. Once again, when I put that acid at the base of the nail, sometimes those cells can hide from us. Uh, occasionally what can happen is the nail can, can split. And that's a, that's a cosmetic problem that I showed you before. And, and that's more of a uh, cosmetic, it grows back and, and it might split the nail and then you have to redo it. And then the other thing is I call it the diving board toenail. You know what that is? It's when the doctor takes both edges, and so it looks like a kind of a diving board afterwards. And that's a cosmetic issue that patients have. They're, they don't have any problem with ingrown toenails anymore, but they're awfully embarrassed to wear their, their shoes, their sandals in the summer. So that's why we're going to talk about, this is the, a newer procedure that we're doing. Um, it's called Onifix. And this is something that's kind of revolutionized what we do as podiatrists. And um, I want to talk a little bit about it because we're, we're kind of excited. We, I think I've done it on six or seven patients or six, and six or seven toenails so far. And it, it's kind of a, a neat thing. So I'll explain first to show you what happens with the anatomy. So you can see the start of the nail, it's curved in. 
not supposed to be like that painful. Once again, not an infected toenail, but over, you see, 24 weeks and then 36 weeks, the actual nail becomes less curved in. Okay, does that make sense? And I'll explain how that happens. Now, you can see a real severe example. This example is a normal looking toenail, but look at how curved that is. It might be a little thickened, okay? It might have a fungus, but not everyone needs to have the fungus treated, okay? Not everyone is a good candidate for the, for the treatments. And what do you do with this? You put it on and 36 weeks later, look at that. Look at how it straightens out. Before we had this treatment, the only option I had for a thick curved nail like that is to remove the whole thing or to kill the whole nail so there's no nail on there. So this is giving people an option. If this is painful and squeezing the skin, it, it's an option for you. Main problem, falls off, okay? And the other problem, you have to select the proper patient, okay? Um, once again, if your ingrown toenail does not bother you, you don't need this. If you only have a, a curved toenail, doesn't bother you, you don't have to do this. But these are those people that have pressure, they have pain, they, they have to, if, for example, what happened during this whole COVID is that people couldn't see us for six or nine months and then they had infections and they had really painful toenails because they depended on seeing us or getting a pedicure. Many people, the pedicure places weren't open so they had to come and see me because they were so dependent on that. This is a way, and it actually um, resolves the ingrown toenail. It's not just a treatment that you put it on a few times, but after about nine or 12 months, it reteaches, it's kind of like a brace. It, it, it braces like in your teeth, it, it redirects it in a straight pattern and then once you do that, it's fine for, we can't say the rest of your life, but uh, it's, it's fine for a long, long time. Uh, the nice thing as well, it's safe for children because children, they hate these injections. And so a lot of times with, with children, what we can do is we can just trim out a little edge and, and you kind of lift it up a little bit and put one of these on there and you don't have to do the injection for them. Okay. It, it's great for diabetics as well. It's safe enough for diabetics with neuropathy, with, with poor blood supply in those people that you typically wouldn't want to do one of these matrixectomy procedures. I mean, that's the one where you put the chemical because a chemical burn takes, takes longer to heal than a regular incision. And we know that diabetics for a lot of those, a lot of them, they can heal slowly and you wouldn't want to uh, cause a problem. So there's no problem with this. It also works with people that have soft nails and that tends to be people that are on chemotherapy. They have a lot of nail changes, ingrown toenail changes and it could be a good option for them. And then the really hard nails. So even if you are a, uh, have a fungal toenail, it can help with that. So we're really kind of excited about this. Um, it's a new technology. Let me show you exactly how it works. And uh, you know, after about my sixth one, it's starting to look like this. The first couple were pretty hairy, I tell you, <laughs> putting it on. Um, so you're not gonna be my guinea pig if you come in for this. Uh, what you do is there's a resin, okay? So first of all, you apply a, a liquid on the nail itself. And then you use a LED light. I turn that LED light, that's that bright light, and that cures it. And then I put this little strip of, basically it's like an epoxy, uh, like a resin. It, it, it's hard and it, and it goes on your nail and then your body heat heats it up and I form it to the nail. It can't touch your skin, okay? It's because of the oils in the skin, but it, you put it right on the nail and then it, it makes that nice, little, um, that nice little line. And that little line stays on there, okay? Um, my... Uh, some people have thought that I should put little, for the girls, I should put some gemstones on there. So I'm thinking about getting some rhinestones to make it, put some bling on it. And, uh, and then what happens is it just stays on there. So what ha you can see this picture on the left. This is where we apply it. And what happens in a traditional nail, it starts straight. And then as it grows, it curves in. As you can see, the progression of this nail starts straight at the base and curves as it goes forward and grows. So a whole nail takes nine to 12 months to grow out. So it makes sense that to correct anything, it's gonna take nine to 12 months. These applications last about three months. I guarantee them for three months. And then if need be, we'll do another one at three months. We could, let's say this is three months worth of growth, six months worth of growth, and then nine months worth of growth, okay? As, as a rough example, so you, what you would do is you would put one on, you would trim out the nail if there's any in the edge that bothers you. And then as it grows out three months, I would evaluate it if needed, I would put another one on, but usually I would wait for the six month period. And then I could put an additional one right here. Once this grows out more past the six month mark, it's probably gonna fall off and that's normal because the nail moves more and it, it, it just doesn't stick on for that long. And then you, would, you, you apply up to about three of these, okay? Once again, a lot of this is, is, is new uh, because it's a new technology. It might be three, might be more, might be less. I've heard for patients that have really slow growing nails, some of these fungal toenails, it can take up to up to nine months for it to fall off. 
and then it's going to correct the toenail over time. You can see this picture on the right. So it's really exciting, uh, newer treatment for ingrown toenails. And so I think I, I answered all those questions. Uh, there's just some other examples. You can see that one where you use the two bars, let this grow out about six to nine months, and then you add an additional bar at the base. You can also do it on the lesser toenails too. We're going to take a, 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 any questions that people have about the ingrown toenails. You could certainly write question and then open your mic, or you could just um, write it in the message. Uh, the cost. Yep. So they recommend um, doing it for 125 a toenail. I'm still learning. Okay. So if, if you come in, I, I just kind of, usually it's like for 50 and you apply it. So 50 might be, as I get better, it's going to cost more. Okay. But they recommend for 125 per application. So that would be three applications. Okay. You might need two, you might need one, depending on your nail. And then what's going to happen? It's not covered by insurance. That's always a question. It's not covered by insurance. You can use your flex spending account for it. And then what happens is though, if it falls off before three months, I'll put it, I'm not going to charge you to put it on again. It has to last at least three months. Okay. So that's the, any other questions about Onifix before we go on? Once again, I'm still learning. So I just kind of, you can be my guinea pig. Okay. Good. Okay. I don't think there's any, any other questions. Let's go on to the, the second topic we wanted to talk about. And this is something um, about ugly toenails. And as I mentioned in the beginning, there are some other treatments for ugly toenails. And a lot of you who see me, you've, you've seen kind of, I, use, I like to use visual uh, examples to explain things, but we went over some of these reasons for ugly toenails. Once again, this is an ugly one from an ingrown toenail. And these probably had trauma and these probably have a fungal infection or something like that, okay? Dr. Pelto. Hi. I think Brendan had a question yeah. if it worked in most cases of ingrown toenails. It, it, it does. And it's really patient de dependent, Brendan. And um, once again, it's new to us to do it, but I, there's really the only ones that it doesn't work would be the ones where it falls off because it's going to hold it out. Or if you have at the base of the nail, it's already really, really curved in. So for the most part, it, it does. They have a like years and years of using this in Germany. That's where they've been using it a lot more for a lot more years. And they started a year ago in Canada doing it. And now we're starting here in the United States using it. But yes, it, it does work. I've heard, uh, yes, I've had, yes. So yes, and it, correct, and it corrects the nail. It's not like you're gonna put it on for the rest of your life. It's gonna correct it. Thank you, good question. Okay. Uh, and then certainly we can talk afterwards if there's any other, any other questions you guys can ask me. Uh, let's talk about the ugly toenails. What causes an ugly toenail? I'd say 90% of what I see are fungal toenails and the other like 10% are nail trauma, nail lifting and detachment, which I talked about before, and then having a previous procedure that might be having your toenail removed, having a portion of the nail removed, having an ingrown toenail. And there's a lot of things. And this really is more of a, causes a lot of problems for people in the summertime with wearing sandals and that it's embarrassing. Um, you know, that, that, that's the problem with this. I like to use charts. I really think this helps me to understand and explain things to my patients better. And everyone asks me, what are the treatment options for, for nail fungus? And the other question they ask me is, is the Lamisil gonna, gonna harm my liver? Okay, and we'll, we'll hopefully talk about some of those things. But we're gonna go in order. Let's talk about if you have a nail fungus and you wanna put on a topical antifungal, and that can be anything from Vicks, to something we have formula three or formula seven here, or you get um, keratin or one of these other ones that are over the counter. I don't find that for real thick toenails like these picture right here, they're very effective. And the problem is you have to use them. Once again, a nail takes nine to 12 months to grow out. You have to use it that whole time. And I find that really thick ones, they don't do very well with topical. So I usually tell people, if you're gonna buy one, get one that has a money back guarantee, you can use it, but it's very frustrating. What it can benefit though, is if it's a really thick toenail, it can soften it and make it easier for you to trim, okay? Um, in terms of, we're gonna talk about the effectiveness, the ease of use, the recurrence rate, and any concerns. I think topicals are effective, maybe six to 20%. I know their literature says more, but I haven't seen that many people that have great results. The ones I see that have really good results are the ones that have only a little bit of white on top of the nail little bit of white or a little edge or something like that, they might do okay. okay. And you can get these topicals. They can be prescription. They can be over the counter. Prescription tend to have quite high copays. And so it might be cheaper to do an over the counter really is, is up to you. VIX is a fine option. 
I, I don't think VIX really works. I don't think it cures it. And the problem is when you're looking at your toes, a good tip, take pictures every three months. You know, day one, three months, six months, nine months, 12 months. Okay. If the nail really hasn't gotten better in 12 months, the VIX isn't working. The treatment isn't working. We get very hopeful by using things. And so I have people, oh, I think it's looking a little bit better. Pictures are the best way to do pictures. Okay. Um, better for mild cases. Um, oral medication. I think oral is still the best. I give a, out oral medication a lot for, for ugly, thickened fungal toenails. I take a nail sample prior to verify. I think it's about 60 to 80%. And the main reason uh, doctors, and you can see on the recurrence rate right here, all fungus has a very high recurrence rate. You need to know that. Okay, that's the challenge with, with an antifungal. I kind of have a different treatment protocol for the oral. Um, I have them take it for three months. Then I might do what I call, it's once a day for three months. Then I might have them take it at, for another six months with one pill a week, only just to keep a little bit in your system. It's off label, I wanna let you know, but it's basically to keep people consistent. And then if it's not totally grown out, I'll give you another three months if, it, if it's needed. I also have people take biotin because that helps with skin and nail growth. And but regardless, in a lot of people, they with any of these, they'll choose to use something called a steri shoe to kill any fungus that might be in your shoe gear because it, it's li a fungus lives in a warm, moist environment. And you also have to clear up any athlete's foot as well. Dr. Uh, Pelter, yep. could you answer Lori's question? What causes fungal problems? Ah, uh, thank you. Um, fungus is caused by a dermatophyte, okay? So um, a dramatophyte is uh, a, a type of uh, infection that gets into the nail. There's a lot of different types. So a fungal toenail, uh, it can start with a trauma or it can start with rubbing in your shoe and it lives in a warm, moist environment and that's a prime place for this fungus to happen, okay? If you think about your, your, uh, your, if, if, if your house is in a warm, moist environment, you get all that stuff that grows on the side you get fungus in the toenail. It's hard to get rid of. It tends to transfer from one toe to the other. I guess it could transfer from one person to another. That's a big question I get. And, um, but it, it's caused by a dermatophyte. The best way to determine though is taking a sample. I always take a sample because it also could be from a candida infection. It could be from a pseudomonas infection and it could be just from trauma. So taking a sample will tell you what type of organism. And if that organism is, uh, if, it, if, it, if it's medication will work, whatever medication we're going to give you, if you're going to choose that route. And uh, for Lamisil, we, we still do get liver function tests. I tend to get that at the beginning. If everything is okay, I'll give it to you. Um, I might repeat it. But I have a very high comfort level with this. I know a lot of primary cares do not have a lot of high comfort level, so they recommend a topical. But I see the people that have tried the topical. Okay, That's who comes in to see me. My doctor recommended topical, didn't work. Is there anything else I can do? Do I have to just live with it? Okay. Uh, a lot of doctors say, you know, it's just a cosmetic thing. And so just live with it. It's, it's not, it's, it's not going to kill you. You know, it's not going to, you know, there's not danger to it, but it's bothersome. A lot of people are, are frustrated with it. Okay. So I'm still a big advocate of oral. I give a lot of oral out. <clears throat> uh, one of the newer treatments that we've had, uh, and it's been a number of years is, is laser treatment. I do not think laser is as effective as oral but a lot of people are scared of oral. If you're scared and you wanted to try laser, there's the, the protocol that I do is I, I try two laser treatments, six weeks apart. So we get you 12 weeks, we take pictures. And if we see improvement, then I might do one or two more treatments. Laser is expensive. I want to tell you that, okay? Because the lasers are expensive. They're about $60,000 each. They're expensive lasers to do this. Um, I know some places that do laser tattoo removal, they'll do some type of a laser as well, laser type of treatment. Um, works okay, not as good as the oral, but we will try it. And then if not, we'll switch to oral or you'll just live with it. Okay. Once again, every, everyone has a high recurrence rate. Okay. I can go more in detail about laser. It's kind of complex. It's different wavelengths. We use two different lasers here. One's called Qterra and one's called Lunula. Um, people a lot of times like to try that before they will do the oral medication. Uh, removal. I just want to be complete here. Some people just say, hey doc, just remove my, my toenail. It has fungus and we'll just remove the whole thing. Uh, I say 50% effectiveness rate. I probably say 50, 50, 50, it'll grow back as a fungus and 50, it'll grow back normal. If it's real, real thick and it's been injured, it's kind of hard um, to do that. Um, and the concern with that is sometimes it can injure the nail bed where it grows from and make it look a little funky afterwards. 
And the last thing we're going to end on is, is more of a cosmetic procedure for patients. So let's say you're doing the, um, the oral medication and you're concerned because of the nail trauma. There's a nail resurfacing. It's a, it's a cosmetic, and we're going to talk about that. It, it's, done only usually, it's only done in the summertime, and so this is kind of the prime time for people going to the beach, and they'll do it. It lasts for about you know, a month or two or three, depending on how active you are. And that's what we're going to focus on. This is, once again, more of a cosmetic thing, but it's really uh, helped people. So once again, we're going to go through a few examples just to show you uh, what could be done. And this is done in the office. It takes about 15 minutes. Um, Carryflex, um, you put this on here. Once again, you put a, um, a resin to start and you use a UV light. And then you apply this. It's like a gel. It's not like the same gel that they do at the nail salon. It's a, it's a, it's a different one where you actually form and format the nail. And I'm getting better at it. I'm getting, actually, I'm getting pretty good at it. And, uh, but you can see they come in like this and they leave like this and they can paint their nails. And once again, they're just super happy. Um, here's a, a patient of mine. She had all these ingrown toenail procedures done in the past. And she was really frustrated and we put on this and then she was able to paint this, okay, this nail on there. Um, that's for ingrown toenails. You can use it for thickened toenails. Um, once again, these thickened ones, it just kind of looks, you know, people don't like it. This is a man that had this done on the, on the big toenail just for the summertime, just made him feel better. You can also do this as you're treating it with an oral antifungal. Now, this is a one that had the nail detachment. This probably isn't a fungus, but it's really hard to get nails to attach again. Really, really hard. You can try trimming it back, but if it doesn't attach, you have to, you can put this on here and it makes it look like a, a very nice nail. Uh, once again, nail detached, doesn't look like it's a fungus. Um, there might be some buildup in the edge, but you can apply this on. It looks really nice. This one, this green, it tends to be more of like a pseudomonal infection. And uh, this can, um, this, you can apply this, um, this Carryflex on here. The Carryflex takes about 15, 20 minutes to put on. You use a, a light to cure it. it. Lasts two to three months, then it'll fall off. I want you to know, I guarantee it for two to three months. If it falls off before, I'll put, you, I'll put on another one. A lot of it's depending on um, how active you are. Uh, but you have to have a little bit of nail to attach it to. You can't have no nail. You can't totally remove the toenail. Like this nail, they have a little bit to attach to. You have to have something to attach to. Otherwise, you can't do it just on the plain nail bed. Okay? So that's the last one. And those are the kind of the two new things. I think we're right about on time. And I wanted to go over with you guys. And um, if you guys are a kind of high tech, um, you, can, you can use your little phone and you can scan this code, take a picture of it with your phone, and uh, it, will, it will download the presentation for you. On my blog, and I just find my blog easier to update than our website. So on the blog, I'm going to put a post here. And there's a little book I'm going to put on there on, on ingrown toenails that you can look at. There is, um, there's this actual presentation. If you want to look at the presentation, share it with anyone. And then certainly, I'd be happy to answer any questions now. If anyone had any questions, you can, you can ask. Otherwise, we'll finish up. Any hey, guys. Thank you for watching Healthy Living. You're going to find a few links here I'd like to click. One is to subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Uh, also, you can learn more. There are some videos here you can see.